Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another exciting episode of Universal You. Today, I will be sharing with you the tale of the Martians. In the previous video, I shared with you what the Nakal, the immortals of Lemuria, the original pantheon, did on the island of Udal and Atlantis. I mentioned that they overlaid the structure of the Tree of Life from the continent of Atlantis and that the respective Sephiroths were filled except for two, one being filled by the Hebrews of our future and one being filled by the Martians. Now, I promised to go in depth a little on the Martian side of things because it's important. I'm sharing with you as many events and turning points in Earth history that form the experience we're having today, all right? <sighs> Bear in mind, uh, we've already entered into an harmonious state of existence, and this serves as a bit of a bit of history, all right? Take it as a, a story. Yeah? All right. A million years ago, Mars was beautiful. It had oceans, and it had water, and it had trees. The Martians decided to participate in a experiment. This participation is what's known as the Martian Rebellion, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to call it an experiment. I may come back to this, but not for a very long time. All right, good. The Martians decided to participate in an experiment that resulted in their love connection with reality being severed. Uh, yeah. This resulted in pandemonium throughout the universe and many planets were destroyed. Mars was one of them, among others, all right? A few other races decided to participate in this experiment. And they are the greys and the reptilians, all right? Uh, they, um, they disconnected their emotional body they separated themselves from their feminine aspect. And in order for life to exist, there must be harmony between the father and the mother in order to produce the child. This is just a basic condition for life. Anyway, what happened was as a result of this experiment, they became pure logic and your, uh, shall I say, masculine energy. And um, Mars became a battleground. And it went on and on until eventually they blew away their atmosphere and the surface of Mars was destroyed. 
Before Mars was destroyed, they built huge tetrahedral pyramids. I'll put pictures up here so you can see them clearly. Uh, hmm, yes. Eventually, uh, they had a complex that was able to generate a synthetic Merkaba. You can um, you can have a, a, a space-time vehicle or you can have a space-time structure. They brought a space-time structure and they used it to peer ahead into the future their future, and uh, they translated themselves into that open vortex left on Atlantis. And they didn't ask for permission. Remember Enel of the Nephilim? He had to get permission from the Galactic Command in order to mine gold and live on this planet. Uh, because because the Martians were a part of this experiment, rebellion, as it were, they did not ask for permission, and uh, yeah, they simply said, let's do it, and they decided to occupy that vortex. This is about 65,000 years in Earth's past. All right. It's a lot to gather from what I just told you. But it is important to understand that all these beings are ultimately still a part of creation. Individualized manifestations of the universal mind experiencing itself. This had to happen. If it didn't have to happen, then it wouldn't have. All right, I'm going to go into a bit more detail in the next video. I realize I was a bit cryptic in today's episode. That's merely because there is an aspect of the information that I'm sharing with you that I have chosen to share with you later. <laughs> but for now, I feel that I'm going to go into what happened between the Nicole, the, the beings of Atlantis and the Martians and how their interactions <sighs> resulted in a lot of galactic intervention on this planet for this species in the name of love and light. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. As always, love yourselves, and in so doing, love those around you. <laughs>